Hi, it's Rachel here again. I just want to update you on what's happening in New Zealand. Uh, currently, a review of the Charities Act 2005 is underway. It's long overdue. And I've taken particular interest in this review, although uh, it's quite disappointing that the terms of reference for it are so narrow. Uh, the minister who's heading up this uh, review had determined that the fundamental or first principles of the Charity Act uh, was were sound, and that's including basically the definition of uh, charitable purpose and public benefit included in, with some other things. But uh, <clears throat> a lot of people, including uh, a lot of the charities that uh, have been involved in discussions, aren't happy with that. However, uh, they are stuck with the review that we now have, which is fairly limited. And it will help uh, perhaps the smaller charities quite quite considerably, so that, that's good. But um, it doesn't go far, the, the review doesn't go far enough. Um, I attended a public consultation meeting last week that was open to anyone with an interest to go along and hear some of the people that are involved with the review give a presentation that, that included people from charity services, which uh, is, is now that and the registration board, uh, who are the ones who um, sort of administer and register the charities <coughs> um, and ensure that they're complying with the Act, that sort of thing. It used to be charity, the Charity Commission, but now it's Charity Services and the, the Charities Registration Board um, acting in, under the umbrella of the Department of Internal Affairs, or a government department, which that in itself causes concern to some people. Uh, they would like it to be independent from the government. Anyway, it is what it is. And anyway, uh, when I went to this meeting, the majority, well probably everyone except me, were persons that were either on trusts and involved in administrating in a, you know, running a charity organisation. Uh, some of them were very large charities, um, and some were very small. It's, it's the very small ones that are struggling quite a lot uh, with the, the red tape Although it's not really that the reporting rules, they have to report so much to uh, charity services to maintain their charity registration. <clears throat> but anyway, when this whole review was announced uh, last year, or maybe, mm, I'm not sure when it was announced, I think it was early last year, uh, the minister in charge said one of the purposes of it was to promote public trust and confidence in the charitable sector. And, of course, I seized upon that, thinking, OK, um, the Jehovah's Witness organisation, with its harmful practices and uh, teachings regarding shunning and um, the uh, homosexual community, uh, <coughs> Uh, you know, many things, uh, the, the um, non-reporting of child sexual abuse to the police, all these things um, were harmful, yet the purpose of the Act is to encourage public trust and confidence in the charity. But having gone to the meeting and read through the public discussion document that was produced for the purpose of uh, assisting people to make submissions, uh, to the review, uh, I suppose it goes to the the people who are like the core reference group, I'm not sure. Anyway, <coughs> ultimately the government, I suppose. So I read through the materials and it, it, it's quite apparent that most of the, most of it was discussing just the financial side of charities like uh, uh, um, promoting trust and confidence in in the, the charity handling their funding correctly and, and administering their charity 
correctly and all above board and very little covering the actual quality of services of the charity and whether the public are happy with that. I mean, the, when this review was announced, it made it sound like, uh, you know, if you're unhappy with a charity, you could voice your concern. But it seems to be predominantly about the way the money is handled. Um, well, that's not my prime concern. I want to, I want to be confident that the charities are not promoting some kind of practice that is actually harming people, and we know that is what the Jehovah's Witnesses do, and other, probably mainly religious organisations and other high control groups. They harm people, and I don't didn't see much accountability for that within the Act. There was only one point in the Charities Act, uh, point 183A, I think it was, where it was discussing the registration of charities, you know, when, it, when a charity um, applies to be registered as a charity. And the registration board uh, has to take into, it says in, in this Thing in the Act, they have to take into account the activities of the charity at the time they apply for registration and their proposed future activities. And, and uh, they will consider other, what they consider relevant information. So perhaps I'm just looking for areas that that I can talk about when I make my submission, because uh, I do want to make a submission, and perhaps that is an area that could be expanded upon the activities, you know, activities that do not cause harm, for example. Um, you know, because surely not all activities are fine. I was reading up uh, a document uh, was it a letter? I oh, don't know what it was, but anyway, <clears throat> we're a charity that practiced, uh, well, they didn't want to call it conversion therapy, but they, they, they uh, were associated with a religious group. It had a strong religious element to it, and they were offering services and counselling to uh, homosexuals who... Uh, wanted help to become heterosexual, I suppose. Um, anyway, ultimately their application for registration was declined because it, it's accepted scientifically these days that homosexuality is not a, a choice that people make. Um, like this group was asserting that it was you know, environmental factors and things like that, and it basically a learned thing, and that it could be unlearned. Um, whereas evidence today among uh, uh, therapists and doctors is that uh, it is not because of that, and it's that people are actually born um, that way. So, um, because that's a commonly accepted view in society today in New Zealand, then their application for registration was declined. So I wondered whether the same kind of uh, principles could be applied to Jehovah's Witnesses with, with a shunning. You know, it's not acceptable in New Zealand for people to discriminate against someone um, and especially have that written into organisational uh, instructions to to shun someone for not having the same uh, view, uh, to break up families. So, and of course it's this, the same situation again with um, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, teach that homosexuality is, is a grave sin, a grave moral wrongdoing, and uh, 
I guess they believe that it's a learned thing. But whatever it is, the literature um, is, shows they're definitely not okay with it. So, And the, the literature is, of course, what they share with people in the ministry. So, um, and of course, at talk, you know, during talks given at the meetings and uh, large gatherings. So, uh, anyway, that's where things are here. And I was quite interested in, and I can't pronounce his Swedish name, <laughs> but Goat Light Personality, that's his YouTube channel, uh, is sort of thinking along the same lines, you know, it, with the, you know, in his country, well, at least in, in Sweden, um, the Jehovah's Witnesses actually get some funding from the government, apparently, and he, he feels strongly that that's not okay, given what Jehovah's Witnesses practice, as far as uh, abusing children, basically, in in many ways, not just, not just talking about sexual abuse, but raising them in the, that kind of environment where they're subjected to imagery like uh, horrible Armageddon pictures and they grow up in fear. And uh, yeah, where is the protection for them? So he's trying, he's, he's sort of raising awareness of this over there and getting media attention, so that's really good. Uh, anyway, I think that's about it I've got to say on the subject. Uh, I'll let you know of any further developments. Okay, bye.